Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new powerful ARM-based single board computer and with this you can actually get it with up to 32 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of eMMC storage built into the board. This is known as the Orange Pi 5B. A couple months ago they released the Orange Pi 5 and with that board there we actually got a really powerful little unit but it was definitely lacking a few features that the 5B has here like onboard eMMC storage up to 256 gigabytes which in my opinion is more than enough for a single board computer on the RAM and the storage side. I mean 16 gigs is definitely overkill for a small board like this but it's awesome to know that they do offer this and they actually offer it with more RAM. This also has onboard Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. With a lot of the newer single board computers coming out, we've been seeing them kind of leaving those features off of the board. So you do have to buy more accessories down the road to get that up and running. But with the Orange Pi 5B, it's all included here. So we definitely have a lot to go over and test out in this video. But before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD keys is for their Windows keys. Right now their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here, I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So obviously when we talk about single board computers, the first thing that's going to come to basically anybody's mind is the Raspberry Pi. And I did want to give you a quick size comparison here. The Orange Pi 5B is coming in a bit larger than the Raspberry Pi 4, as you can see here. And it is lacking one of those USB 2.0 ports that we have on the Pi 4. But what it's lacking in I.O. up front there, it's actually making up on the side. Because we've got USB Type-C. Now you might notice we have two ports here. One of them is only going to be for power, it's 5 volts in, the other one is USB 3.0 protocol. Plus, we've got full-size HDMI on this board. I know micro HDMI can make these things a bit smaller, but it's a bit cumbersome if you ask me. I'd much rather have a full-size port. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this does have onboard eMMC storage, but we can also use a micro SD card to either boot up our operating system from, or we can use it as extra storage. And of course, up here, we've got Gigabit Ethernet, along with that built-in Wi-Fi 6. And taking a look at the other I.O. here, we've got a 26-pin GPIO header, a debug TTL UART port, it's got a built-in microphone, dedicated power button, recovery key, and a mask ROM key. It has three camera connectors and two LCD connectors. We've got two of those camera connectors up top here, one of the LCD connectors, and moving around to the back, you can see we've got the others. So three cameras, dual LCD, we could also run HDMI out, three displays, three cameras running on this board at the same time. So we've got a great selection of I.O. here with the board, and when it comes to the specs, this thing's definitely not a slouch because it's using the Rockchip RK3588S. We've got four Cortex-A76 cores running at 2.4 GHz and four Cortex-A55 cores running at 1.8. The GPU is the Mali G610 MP4. You can get this with up to 32 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM. It's going to be soldered to the board there because we're working with a single board computer. You can also opt for up to 256 gigabytes of eMMC storage, plus it supports that micro SD card. And when it comes to operating systems, we've actually got a few that we can choose from right now. Heading over to the Orange Pie website, we can check out their download section. Now there is one here that I really wanted to test out, but it's not available yet for the 5B. Orange Pie OS Arch. So if I go to downloads, it's just not here. Unfortunately, we just can't download that yet. But they do have their Droid version of Orange Pi OS. And that's the one that came pre-installed on the internal storage. So we're going to be testing that out in the video. But as soon as uh, Orange Pi OS Arch is available for the 5B, we will be testing it. They've also got some Ubuntu images. You can go with the GNOME desktop or XFCE. Debian, an Android tablet or an Android phone version. We've also got the source code here, user manual, and all the tools you'll need to flash that eMMC storage. 
Okay, so here we are with Orange Pi OS Droid. Now they do have a Linux version, but right now for the 5B it's not available. So right off the bat, I'm going with the Droid version. And by the way, I mean, this was already pre-installed and they've really tried to make this more of a desktop experience than just, you know, a tablet version of Android or even an Android TV version on this single board computer. It's a step in the right direction, but you know, it's definitely not quite there yet. As you can see, we've got our taskbar. And uh, this opens up just kind of like an app launcher, so we don't get that full screen effect. We do have multi-window support. So if I open up, let's say, the calculator, we've got full resizability. Uh, no snap feature. Would be nice to be able to bring that over to the side there. And right now, I am on a 1080p display. We can go up to 4K with this, but uh, I've just got it connected to my game capture. Let's open up uh, Calendar. So we can have those multi-apps open, multi-windows. Most of the time we see just kind of a tablet interface. And if we head over to our settings, display, we can change the resolution and the screen zoom or screen scale. We've also got a rotation feature here. In my opinion, for using a keyboard and mouse, it's definitely a lot nicer than just a tablet version, but it definitely needs some work. It's a great idea, and they're definitely on the right track, but uh, we do need a little more out of this. We can access the GPIO directly from Android. And of course, when it comes to an app store, this doesn't come pre-installed with Google Play, but it's actually pretty easy to install. I was using APK Pure before that, but at least the English version of Orange Pie OS Droid comes with the Aurora Store pre-installed. Now I've got a lot to test here, but uh, the first thing I wanted to take a look at were just some benchmarks that I ran on this unit. And first up, we've got 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark for that Mali GPU, 4,377. And the other one I ran was Antutu, just to kind of give us an overall score here. And this managed to hit 573,726. So it's on par with the other 3588 boards that we've seen. Actually, this is a little higher than some of the other ones, mainly because on the bigger cores, it is running at a true 2.4 gigahertz. I've seen some of the other boards only clock up to around 2.2. Next thing I wanted to do was test out some native Android gaming. And first up, we've got Minecraft. This is one that uh, you could definitely play on this with no problem at all. And of course, we've got 16 gigs of RAM here. If you were looking to just run Android on this board, you could go with the 4 gig model and you'd be perfectly fine with everything you're going to see running in this video. But Minecraft is one of those games that runs amazingly on the RK3588. Asphalt 9, using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth, runs really well. I was actually surprised because on some of the other boards that we've tested, I've seen some stutters, especially when there's lots of particles and effects on screen, but this is buttery smooth, and I am at the default settings with this game. I didn't have to lower anything to get this kind of performance out of it. And finally here for native Android gaming, we've got Call of Duty Mobile, and one of the big reasons I don't test Genshin Impact here is because you can't use a controller without a third-party app but it will run at low settings and it does run quite well. But Call of Duty Mobile is one of those games you can use an Xbox controller with. And right now we're at high frame rate, high settings, and it looks great on this larger display. We're definitely running at full speed. We also had to check out some emulation on this device. And you know, I test PSP on this all the time. So I figured I'd just go with N64 instead because I'm actually not sure if I've ever tested N64 on this chip. And yeah, even 007 runs at full speed. I'm using the Moopin 64 plus FZ app directly from Google Play. You're going to get amazing performance with N64. Next thing we're taking a look at is some GameCube emulation. And this chip isn't going to run the super hard to run GameCube games using the Dolphin emulator. Like F-Zero GX and Rogue Squadron is a little out of the question, but there's still a ton of games that are going to run at full speed. And by the way, I'm using the official development version of Dolphin from their website. And with Time Splitters 2, I just swapped over to the Vulcan backend and we're running these games at full speed. There's quite a few games that are going to run really well on this board. I've actually had a great time with GameCube emulation on the RK3588, and it's great to see we've got single board computers that can do this now. And along with GameCube, it also offers some PS2 emulation. Here's Kingdom Hearts 2 at 2x resolution using the Vulcan backend with the Ether SX2 emulator. This isn't a super hard game to emulate, but uh, yeah, I mean, it runs great. And even something like Gran Turismo 4 will run at 2x resolution. God of War needs to be dropped down to about 0.75, 
And even then, we still get some frame drops with that game, but you can always enable a few cycle skips. I'm in safe mode right now with both of these games that I tested, and they run amazingly. So overall, we've got a great performing little single board computer here with the Orange Pi 5B. And when it comes to the Orange Pi OS variants that they're offering, I'm kind of stuck here with Droid, but uh, I do like it. I think it looks good. It is moving in the right direction, kind of giving us more of a desktop oriented operating system with Android. But as soon as the Arch version of Orange Pi OS is available, we're definitely going to be testing it out. They do have more information over on their website. And obviously, this is going to be based on Arch Linux, which is something I love to see. But uh, it does seem to be a very easy to use, minimal operating system that should function really well on the RK3588. If you're interested in seeing what the Orange Pi 5B can do with that operating system, definitely think about hitting that subscribe button and turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video at this little board here. Really great performance. I know we've been seeing a lot of RK3588 boards hit the market, but I did think this one was pretty interesting given that they're offering a variant with 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's pretty much unheard of in the SBC world, at least when it comes to ARM-based boards, but we've got it now with the Orange Pi 5B. If you're interested in learning a little more about this board, or if there's anything else you want to see running on it, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.